You think about design, complexity of information. Design and complexity of information doesn't just happen on its own. Yes, the kind of incidental design that you're unwittingly talking about now really does happen on its own. Evolution is an inevitable aspect of imperfect reproduction in population genetics, and natural selection is going to result in differential products with adaptations that will be better suited to their different environmental conditions. To my experience, it seems as if creationists are incapable of comprehending patterns of emergent complexity, probably because this requires big picture cognitive capacity. Where creationists commonly imagine evolution as a suite of dramatic changes occurring in a single individual during its one lifetime, like what happens to the X-Men comics, the reality is completely opposite of that. With subtle changes, random alterations accumulating in divergent populations over many generations of algorithmic optimization of these simple modifications being incidentally improved over time. Religious fundamentalists are handicapped by their bias to imagine a governing authority orchestrating from the top down. However, patterns of emergent complexity actually arise from the bottom up and are consequently far more intricate than what a top-down administrator even could do. Whether in reality or in computer simulations, these evolving patterns are an incidental result of an intricate, interrelated array of the lowest components working together in unison, each according to a few relatively simple rules. As the mathematician Benoit Mendelbrot said, infinite complexity can be described by simple rules, and computer simulations demonstrate that. Some models have illustrated that natural selection employing a trial and error method on myriad descendant lineages at once can actually even exceed the capacity of human designers. In fact, natural selection can be so deterministic that it often leads to innovations which some perceive as evidence of intelligent design and which even rationalists may describe using analogies as though they were modified for intended benefit. Even without an end goal, once simple rules are laid out, simulated life forms will only seemingly design themselves through an unconscious practice of trial and error over several generations. They'll even refine and improve those designs literally without trying because intent was deliberately removed from the equation. Another computer simulation deals with random mutations occurring in different sections of a population. And these are neutral and trivial, inviting no selection either way. Over thousands of generations, the system shows these unselected mutations drifting throughout that population, such that each of the once identical groups are now not only distinct, but are remarkably different species, just like we see in nature. In either case, the universe does not seem to be dependent on any authoritarian lawgiver, but rather on integral components acting on their own according to the rules imposed by chemistry and physics and population mechanics. And consequently, if any god exists, he wouldn't need to design each individual organism, not if he could instead design a whole system that would automatically generate all of these complex components for him. And which method implies greater wisdom? I mean, if you think about this logically, if I'm walking along a beach somewhere, I've used this analogy on my show before, I'll use it right now. If I'm walking along a beach and I see a sandcastle on the beach and I'm looking around to see who made the sandcastle and I don't see anybody, I've got a choice. I can either A, believe that somebody made the sand castle and I just can't see him, or option B, nobody made the sand castle, it formed itself from the wind and the waves and the sand. Am I open? Is there any skeptic open to that possibility? Well, some of us have actually seen that sort of thing happen before, though I will grant that since the design was unintentional, then our impressions of it are merely the result of pareidolia. You know you're not. I am already aware of Paley's watchmaker argument. Now, William Paley published exactly this argument a couple centuries before Bob Duco plagiarized it by changing the watch to a sandcastle. The argument fails because Paley rightly recognizes that the pocket watch is different from all natural formations in that a pocket watch is a creation requiring a creator. It cannot have formed on its own, whereas we know how rocks are formed, and we know how the pounding surf will eventually turn stone and bone and seashells into grains of sand. The problem is that Paley distinguishes the design of the watch from the undesigned rocks around it. So this is designed as compared to all of these things that are not designed. But then later, 
He goes against himself. He contradicts himself to say that the rocks are no different from the watch, as if rocks require an intelligent designer too. Now, what's more complex, the sandcastle or even the simplest single cell bacteria, let alone the entire human body? What's more complex? When Paley presented this argument back in 1802, it was, it was still a lifetime before Darwin's eventual explanation of the origin of species by means of natural selection, which negated Paley's watchmaker analogy. It makes no sense to imagine someone making an animal the way a craftsman makes a watch. We know that animals are not creations like a watch is or a painting or a building. People have to create those things because they can't reproduce themselves the way living things can. People don't create plants or animals because living things are not inventions. They're not assembled or fashioned somewhere. They evolve naturally. And they're emergent from the molecular level up, which means that they are vastly more complex than whatever a designer even could conceivably build. Now, Paley didn't know any of that back in 1802. But way back then, and even before then, leading minds like the philosopher David Hume already explained how illogical it was to assume a creator the way Paley did. Now, if only modern creationists could catch up on the last couple centuries of thought and understanding. The skeptic says, I would not accept that that designed itself somehow. Correct. Being formed by natural processes is not the same thing as designing itself. But you will accept that this designed itself? Again, external processes and environmental conditions over myriad generations of diverse lineages experiencing variable pressures against population genetics. At no point would any of these individuals even realize themselves that they're part of this process. So there's no way they could be the deciding force behind that decision. There's no decision to be made. All the design work is incidental, unintentional, and going on beyond and outside of them. It's just not logical. Again, I'm taking a left brain logical approach to this. No, uh, you're defending the faith, a wholly irrational set of erroneous assumptions that actually depend on ignorance willfully maintained and bolstered by deliberately deceptive, misleading misinformation. And you're employing a host of logical fallacies to that end. Fallacious reasoning is not logical, nor is it really even reasoning. Yes, I believe what it says in God's word. I trust God's word. I, I get that. Once again, you don't have God's word. What you have instead is a blind trust in the words of ignorant, bigoted, superstitious primitives who thought that the world was flat and they didn't know where the sun went at night. Worse, you're taking an argument from false authority, another logical fallacy, over hard facts to the contrary. But I, I just want, I want the intellectual out there to realize that believing in God actually makes logical sense. No, it doesn't. Certainly not the way you're doing it. Relying on a host of logical fallacies like you do means that your position does not make sense at all. It is logically invalid, not logical, illogical. Which makes me wonder, can you win the war if you lose every battle? Can you win the war if you lose every soldier in every battle? That's how poorly this creationist is doing. That's really how poorly they all do. But he's, just, he's just reciting arguments he's heard all of them make thousands of times, because that's all they've got. And we're now 11 episodes into this series, about halfway through, I think. And Bob Dutko has been laughably wrong on absolutely every single point he's tried to make so far. Spoiler alert, he doesn't get any better toward the end. But even though you already know that, I hope you'll still come along for the rest of the ride.